Hi again. This time we'll be taking a look how you can grow and how I care for Neofinetia falcata, recently renamed Duvanda falcata. This hardy miniature is native to Central and Southeast China, Korea and the Japanese Isles. In the wild, it grows on deciduous trees, pines and on rocks. It is mostly found at higher altitudes or near the sea or water. The growing areas are mostly cool to intermediate and can have very short cold spells. As we'll see later, they can handle short periods of temperatures below freezing. When it grows on trees, the leaves or needles protect it from full sun. And when it grows on rocks, it's always found in the deeper crevices, cooled down by wind. This also means that the plant dries up quickly after heavy rain spells and the roots grow exposed or are partially covered by a thin layer of moss. When we grow them at home or in our orchid nursery, we should take into account what they really don't like. They hate compacted of disintegrating media. Staying wet for too long, both the plant and roots can lead to rot. As a cold to intermediate grower, they don't like long-term high or very hot temperatures. To mimic their natural growth pattern, they need a cooling down period in winter. So it's best not to keep them warm all year round. Although they can take it, keeping them warm all year will also most likely result in no flowering or almost no flowers being produced. Also, good airflow is very important. Stale or standing air can result in the plants being wet for too long after watering, with crown or root rot as a result and constant high humidity without good airflow, and this certainly in the cooler winter period, they really hate. However, they love good and fresh air around the plants and roots during the day and night. As mentioned before, a cooling down period of two to three months, fast drying media, a year round low feed, less water in cooler periods, and in warmer periods, at least daily watering. To thrive, they need a quick wet and dry cycle for both the plant and the roots. I'm often asked what growing media should be used. There really isn't one answer, but any media that gives good airflow and the quick drying off of the roots is crucial. So when grown in pots, a coarse media is best, preferably something that doesn't hold water for too long. This easy orchid can be grown on or in almost anything, so either in pots or some kind of mount. Before we go on looking at some growing possibilities, let's take a look at how they grow in the wild. Neofinitia falcata is the first orchid I ever bought. In fact, it's the orchid that started my love to care and grow orchids. Since the beginning of my hobby, I always had at least one plant of this species in my collection, sometimes going overboard with over 200 plants. And did you know that there are actually three species of Neofinetia? Well, that's a topic for another video. Next to the wild forms, there are several thousand of varieties showing different flower colors and shapes, but also different leaf shapes and variegations. Some of these naturally occur in the wild, but most of them are a result of breeding. I must say thanks to Botany Boy for giving me permission to use some pictures and video footage of his own plants. And as we'll see later, these plants really can take short periods of freezing and snowy weather. And hereby I quote Botany Boy, who wrote to me in an email that when you can grow tulips in your garden all year round, you can leave your Neofinetia outside with a bit of protection. Here we are on the morning of January uh, 18th, 2013, uh, taking a look at the recently fallen snow. Here it is on the Moso Bamboo Grove just outside of the back side of my house. Um, here is the uh, Affinetia falcata. See, covered in snow, they're capable of handling that kind of abuse. There's another one, another clump. There's a view at the uh, a wintry morning at my house in Fukuoka, on the island of Kyushu, Japan. Now let's take a look at some possible ways to grow Neofinesia. All plants and methods shown are from my own collection. 
And by the way, although the flowers may look small and not impressive, when you had the chance to enjoy the fragrance in the evening and at night, you'll never want to go without one anymore. Because this fragrance is so indescribably nice, you don't want to miss it. This slightly bigger leafed variety from Amami Island is grown in a plastic bucket filled only with very coarse bark. Then it's placed in a slightly bigger plastic pot and this assures that there is good air circulation around the roots, yet there also is enough humidity around the plant. This was needed last summer because we had very high dry temperatures, so the humidity around the plant was very important. I also must say that in summer all my neophinetia are grown outdoors in a sheltered and shady position and they stay outside until night temperatures go below 8 degrees Celsius, that's 46 degrees Fahrenheit. Another possibility is to groom on a moss mount the Japanese way. Here they are presented in typical Japanese plastic pots. I imported these from Japan a few years ago. And here's what we need to do so. A pot or a container, water and some high grade sphagnum moss. Preferably long strains of at least 20 cm long. First I soak the sphagnum moss in water and after approximately 10 minutes I start taking it out and sort the longer strands from the short ones. While the moss is soaking, I carefully remove the orchid from its pot, making sure not to damage the roots, and dead or broken roots are cut off. Please keep in mind that I think it's very important that when you buy new orchids, or get them as a present or whatever, please let them adjust for a few weeks to your growing conditions before you start messing with them, unless you can clearly see that there's something wrong with the plant before repotting or mounting it. Traditionally, these Japanese mounds are hollow on the inside. This allows for good air circulation around the roots and fairly quick drying out of the moss. To mimic the special cones that are available, I use plastic mesh pots upside down. First, the mesh pot is covered with shorter pieces of sphagnum moss and firmly squeezed onto the pot. This tightens the moss and the more compacted the moss is packed, the less water it will hold and the quicker it will dry. And then the plant is secured by placing the longer moss strands nicely around the roots. But keep in mind that the base of the plant always must be at least half a centimeter or a quarter of an inch above the moss mount. Otherwise the base of your plant stays too wet for too long and can and will rot. This also applies when we mount the neophinetia on wood or cork bark. And when the moss mount is ready, I just put it in its special neophinetia pot and tidy up.
As I mentioned before, you also can mount it without any problem. Let me show you how I created this mount on a Japanese rough surfaced moon pot. The plants were taken out of their pots and I did the first fit to see where to mount them. Then some cotton string so I can easily secure the plants. As a base I pressed on a bit of sphagnum moss to raise the humidity so the plants will secure themselves quicker and start to grow on.
As I said before, they can be grown in and on almost anything. This one's growing in a tea light holder, just like the next one. And my all-time favorite, this one is growing on a polyrin fucking dog ornament and it's been growing nicely for over a year now. I secured the plant by gluing a few parts of the roots onto the ornament with some super glue. Now the roots are starting to attach themselves to the ornament. And as for watering, this is how I do it. I use a mist spray bottle and spray the plants until they are soaking wet. By this I mean both the plant, the roots and the media they are growing in. On hot summer days this is done at least two times a day, in the morning and evening. As a fertilizer I only use a Kearns rain mix at the recommended dose each time I water. By thoroughly spraying and watering the plants you don't need to flush as the residue is flushed away naturally. And as for water, I use tap water, rain water, reverse osmosis water. These plants don't care, as long as they can dry out quickly. Hopefully you enjoyed this video again. If you have more questions, put them in the comment section below or send me an email. I'll be glad to answer them. Hope to see you next time.